Testing, yes? Okay, can people hear me? Vous m'entendez? Yes? Okay, we will get started. I'm Patricia Fuller, Canada's Ambassador for Climate Change. Je suis Patricia Fuller, l'Ambassadrice pour les Changements Climatiques du Canada. Welcome to this event and to this venue. Je vous souhaite le bienvenu. To those of you who are here and to those of you listening on the live stream, welcome to this event. So, we are launching here at COP26 the Center of Excellence on Gender Smart Solutions of the INSU Resilience Global Partnership. This is a great achievement of uh, a year of hard work by the INSU Resilience Global Partnership and members of the Gender Working Group to commission studies and bring together research, guidelines, opportunities, and our community working at the intersection of gender and climate and disaster risk finance and insurance. So why is the gender of excellence for the INSU Resilience Global Partnership necessary? First, the impact of disasters, as I think you all know, is disproportionate for women and girls. Secondly, there are challenges with incorporating, incorporating gender dimensions in climate and disaster risk financing and insurance solutions. And when they are incorporated, when gender is incorporated, it's often in a manner that is vague, uncoordinated, not a priority, and lacking the capacity, resources, and monitoring mechanisms to ensure that it is successfully implemented. So the Center of Excellence uh, for the partnership can address this challenge. And this afternoon, we will hear from several key stakeholders from the INSU Res Resilience Global Partnership who have directly contributed to driving forward gender smart climate and disaster risk finance and insurance. So I'm going to introduce the panelists. Uh, I'll introduce them now, and then they will come up uh, uh, one by one. So uh, first up will be Nora Buhadada of the UN Climate Champions team. She will be followed by Ms. Tuga Alaskari, who is an advisor at the INSU Resilience Global Partnership and the lead on the Center of Excellence. She'll provide you with background on INSU Resilience. And she will be followed by Ms. Chikondi Chavuta of the Advocacy and Partnerships Coordinator of Southern Africa for CARE International. And she is my fellow co-chair co of the Gender Working Group. And she'll provide insights on the objectives of the working group and the four pillars of the Center of Excellence. And she'll highlight CARE's extraordinary activities on gender in this space. Uh, then we will have Ms. Vasita Wijanayaka, and I'm sorry if I'm mangling the names, I apologize. She is a executive director of the Slycan Trust, and she'll share her experiences in working in a nonprofit think tank based in Sri Lanka. And then we will have Mr. Gurno Laganda of the World Food Program and member of the working group who will share examples of stories of impact. And then following these remarks, uh, there will be time for a moderated discussion where you and the audience will be able to pose questions to the speakers. And so I'll invite you to start to think of your questions as we move along, and also to share your thoughts on gender and climate and disaster risk finance and insurance. So uh, with that, I will invite Nora Buhada, Buhadada of the UN Climate Champions to Give your remarks. Go ahead, Nora. Thank you so much, Ambassador Fuller, for opening this session. I'm honored and privileged to be here, and I want to thank Tuga and the brilliant Ensure Resilience team for their warm invitation. We are here today to address a major gap, and that gap is around the gender dimension of climate risk. While increasing impacts of climate change are felt all over the world, it is the emerging economies, and in particular women and girls, that are most affected. Gender roles, behavior towards women, underrepresentation, and limited access to resources and opportunities shape this gender dimension of climate risk. 
But rather than victims, women do play a key role in combating climate change, as they are often the main providers and managers of their households. And when it comes to post-disaster reorganization for their communities, they show up. Thus, their capacities, knowledge, and skills must not be wasted. We need a coordinated and targeted effort to address these gender gaps, standing in the way of pursuing gender responsive approaches. And we must move towards tangible action to transform the climate and disaster risk finance and insurance sector, or CDRFI, which to date has been operating in a largely gender blind manner. The Insure Resilience Center of Excellence on Gender Smart Solutions has accumulated research showing the growing evidence of the numerous benefits of women's inclusion in financial services, including leadership roles and their economic participation as employees and entrepreneurs. Conferred benefits also include greater governance and stable economies. Indeed, it is estimated that advancing women's equality has the potential to add up to 12 trillion US dollars or 11% in annual GDP to the global economy by 2025. There is a policy imperative to address these gender dimensions of CDRFI, but there remain information gaps to support the implementation of gender-informed approaches, which stand in the way of CDRFI's sector realizing its transformational potential. It is therefore my pleasure to welcome on behalf of the UN Climate Champions, high-level champion of Chile, Gonzalo Munoz, and high-level champion of the UK, Nigel Topping, for the launch of the Insure Resilience Center of Excellence. And I want to thank Insure Resilience Global Partnership, which is a member of our campaign, the Race to Resilience, for their extraordinary leadership and milestone to bridge these gaps. This platform is a concrete contribution to the Race to Resilience, for which I am delighted to announce it is a, as it is a foundational, um, in, it is foundational in ensuring the gender dimension remains a cross-cutting objective in all of our activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nora. That got us off to a really great start in, in telling us why we are here today. So we will now hear from Tuga Alaskari. So Tuga, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ambassador Fuller. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador Fuller. Thank you all for coming here today. I'll just keep this very brief. I see many friends of the Institute of Resilience in this room. Um, but we thought to start off with, it would be really good to just have a little overview of what the Insure Resilience is and where this gender agenda comes in. Um, so the Insure Resilience Global Partnership is a partnership with over 100 members from governments, uh, development partners, private sector, academia, and uh, civil society organizations. This grand coalition is driven by a common vision to scale up disaster risk finance and insurance. Um, to benefit those most affected. One of the key objectives, a cross-cutting objective that has been identified in our vision 2025 is gender mainstreaming. To realize that and to turn this into action, today we're here to learn more about the center of excellence and to launch it. Um, this is backed by um, the Insure Resilience Global Partnerships highest level governing body. We call it the high level consultative group, um, which Ambassador Fuller is a member of. The, the Insure Resilience high level consultative group has endorsed a declaration on gender, which gives us a framework um, that actually articulates what gender mainstreaming means across our work and our programs. To support that, we're here to launch the Center of Excellence, which will help us fill the knowledge gaps and transform this ambition into action. So welcome, everybody, and thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Tuka. And I must say, everyone's running on time, so this is great. This will leave us time for a discussion, which is our goal. So we will now hear from Ms. Chikondi Chabuta, who is Advocacy and Partnership Coordinator for Southern Africa Care International. Go ahead, Chikondi. Thank you very much. Excellencies, respected guests, I am honored to speak before you today 
at the launch of the Insure Resilience Center of Excellence of Gender Smart Solutions. I am Chikondi Javuda, the Advocacy and Partnerships Coordinator for Southern Africa with CARE International. I am a member of the high-level consultative group on Insure Resilience Global Partnership, but I stand before you today as a representative for CARE International, which is a co-chair of the Gender Working Group. By way of recap, the working group was launched in August 2019, after our highest governing body provided a mandate to unlock the potential of applying a gender lens to climate and disaster risk finance and insurance space, later abbreviated as CDFRI. The working group members share knowledge and build connections with each other. Collectively, we develop a cohesive narrative and lay the groundwork for the field to grow. Our members have put forward the Insure Resilience Declaration on Gender, which has guided our activities under the partnership to address differential gender impacts on CDRFRI solutions, and together we frame the objectives of the Center of Excellence. As such, the Center of Excellence stands on four key pillars the foundation to achieve its goal for gender smart action within the CDRFI architecture. We understand the four pillars as key to ensure a win-win between all partners that want to put concepts into practice. Knowledge and evidence to support the collection of key research and case studies on gender responsive and gender sensitive approaches to CDRFI that builds an evidence base of emerging good practices and effective strategies. Guidance, we want to ensure demand-based guidance through the development of step-by-step -step guidance notes and toolkits to support policymakers and practitioners with implementing gender smart solutions across their work. Opportunity, our center of excellence for gender smart solutions shares opportunities on relevant capacity building efforts that aim to raise the awareness on the value and good practice approaches of gender equality, such as leadership training and scholarship opportunities, among others. Community. The Center of Excellence aims to be a platform for a collaborative network on gender-specific approaches to enhance the development of CDRFI solutions and management of information. To date, the platform has been populated with rich resources provided by members of the Gender Working Group, including many of CARE International publications on gender. We need to understand what is meant by gender smart. It means that our efforts must go beyond counting women's participation. The way we consider gender must be transformative. Tackling inequality and unequal access, influence and decision making. Women not being seen as recipients or beneficiaries, of insurance mechanism or social protection, but agents of influence. Adopting a do-no-harm approach so that women are not worse off from climate and disaster risk finance scheme, and trying to undo the systematic and institutional barriers that prevent women from benefiting from and shaping these mechanisms. As care, we do commit to sharing decades of experience in tackling gender inequality in countries and communities most affected by climate change and disasters, adopting a rights-based approach and engaging men and boys in addressing the underlying social norms that reinforce gender equality. In our role as a civil society member of the Insure Resilience Global Partnership and a gender champion on the high-level panel we support the development of guidance and evidence through the Center of Excellence. The establishment of the multi-actor partnership on CDRFI has really shown that an inclusive approach is possible. 
we have seen women in Malawi connecting the emergency fund that forms part of their village savings and loan. And they are connecting the importance that that fund brings to lobbying their government to purchase insure resilience schemes, uh, risk pool funds like the Africa Risk Capacities, and also lobbying for other private entities of insurance at the national level to directly benefit them when disasters strike. Women are actively lobbying simplified and accessible means to really take an active role in decisions that affect their life when it comes to insurance resilience uh, and insurance, insurance schemes. For CARE, the center of excellence means as a global partnership, we will address this differential gender impacts through CDRFI in the operationalization of the partnership's 2025 vision. The center of excellence will also serve as uh, continuously underlying the partnership's commitment to the sustainable development goals overall and specifically on goal number five to really achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls and have women-centered CDRFI decisions. This center of excellence relies on gender complements and the center of excellence complements the partnerships poor, poor principles which guide the implementation of its activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chikondi, and thank you for your great work as co-chair of the Gender Working Group of the INSEE Resilience Global Partnership. So we will now go to Vosita Wijanaika, who is, of, as I mentioned earlier, Slyka and Trust, and she's going to share her experience in working in a nonprofit think tank based in Sri Lanka. So, Vasita, the floor is yours. Uh, what happened to our microphone? Good. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. The mic is working. Yeah, okay. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and I'm Vasita Vijayanayaka. I'm joining from Slyka and Trust. Uh, which is a nonprofit think tank that works uh, in Asia, Africa, and Europe. And we're based in Sri Lanka, and most of our work focuses on policy interventions, research, and also feeding in um, evidence from the ground to policy that's happening in different national level interventions as well as regional and international processes. Um, so I would explain how the work on gender uh, gets integrated into the work that we are doing. So some of the work that we focus on uh, mainly would be on climate change, sustainable development, um, and also ecosystem and biodiversity conservation, um, stakeholder engagement, as well as making sure that inclusive and participatory processes are in place. Um, so we are looking at gender as a key component in any of the work that we are doing. It's an integrated aspect of the work that we are doing, be it research, be it projects on the ground. Um, and we look at capacity building as a key component, uh, which means that we're looking at women, uh, girls, children, um, as well as men uh, who need to be capacity built, uh, boys who need to be capacity built on the theme of gender um, across the board, uh, as well as looking at how gender needs to be integrated into processes so that this could be gender responsive and gender transformative. Um, and looking at this, we also have done analysis in different countries in Africa and Asia, uh, where we are working on na national adaptation plans, uh, of which you might have heard, and uh, resilience building is part of this, and uh, climate and disaster risk transfer instruments, uh, insurance, and options that are also part of this study that we are doing. One of the key things that we are working with IGP um, links to the modules that we're developing on gender, which focuses on biodiversity, coastal marine conservation, um, as well as agriculture and agroecology uh, and livelihood development. We are, we are looking at economic diversification among farmers, and uh, women farmers are a primary focus of our work. Um, and then there's also risk management and youth in climate processes that we're looking at, um, which links with the Food System Summit Dialogues, uh, where we've gone to provincial level engagement um, and identifying needs that are um, gender responsive and actions that could be developed based on the inputs that I received from the ground and feeding into the uh, Food Summit Dialogues as well as other processes linked to this. 
Um, and additionally, we also have entrepreneurship work that we're doing, uh, which looks at risk transfer options, um, accelerator programs that focuses on gender as a key component, uh, which looks at climate and disaster risk insurance as a key component in this and how the instruments could be gender responsive and facilitate women and girls uh, to be more involved in the process as well. Um, so I look forward to working with the Center of Excellence um, and also sharing these products that we're developing to have more processes that are inclusive and participatory that could be at national as well as regional and international. Um, and also looking at how capacity building could be scaled up so that risk transfer options could be uh, for a wide audience, um, especially in the agriculture sector, uh, where in developing countries, climate insurance is an important factor, but we have gaps in gender responsive options. So looking at what could be the pilots that could be developed, what are the best features that could be incorporated, and what are the good studies that we could build on to ensure that we have gender responsive, if possible, gender transformative options for CDRFI. So thank you very much. I look forward to any questions you may have. Fantastic. Thank you, Vasita. And now we, we will go to Gurnaut Laganda of WFP, who's going to talk about stories of impact. So please go ahead, Gurnaut. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the invite. I, I must say I'm especially happy that we have been invited to talk about stories of impact stories from the field, because this is ultimately what, it, what this is all about. Um, and you know when we when we talk about uh, gender, women's empowerment, women's autonomy in in WFP programs, then I get thrown back to one of the things I keep saying on many of the panels, many of the press briefings, that vulnerability is an integrated concept. Resilience requires access to different types of capital, and if you have differential vulnerability of different groups, and in our case women more vulnerable to certain hazards in certain locations, then you need to work on all these capitals together, right? So it is not enough, for example, to only plant trees. You need to combine natural protection with financial protection, access to information, access to decision making. And so now in the context of gender inclusive, gender empowerment in the context of insurance, I want to share a quick story of what we call the R4 Rural Resilience Initiative, which is, I would say, the WFP flagship program on integrated resilience building. The way this works is as follows. During the lean season, that means in times when many families go hungry between the planting and the harvests, we work with large numbers of food insecure people on landscape restoration programs, on programs that essentially restore um, degraded uh, ecosystems, terracing in places where you have landslides, uh, drainage when in places where you have flood risks. And we make a purposeful effort to engage women and provide access to decision making through this process. So there is a participatory process that makes a special effort to mobilize women and basically ask women, what do you think is the most important investment now in the natural landscape? In earlier days, we have always transferred food or cash uh, in these programs in lately, I would say five years ago. We have also started to transfer insurance protection in these programs. So there is access to um, a financial safety net. And then other elements to these programs are communal savings schemes, communal uh, savings groups that can help communities buffer lower levels of shocks that cannot be in insured against. So it's an integrated program. And when I asked uh, about the gender, uh, the gender dimension of these programs, the information I have is the latest, that R4 has allowed uh, during the 2020-2021 season, 180,000 farmers in 10 countries to benefit from these integrated resilience packages and 55% of these were women. So then I said, okay, we have to talk about stories of impact, stories from the field in this, in this event. Um, what can we talk about? And you say, why don't you tell the story of Emelda? And I say, who is Emelda? And they said, Emelda is a woman in, in Zambia. You know? She is living there. We saw her in our last field visit. She is a beneficiary of the, the R4 program. And so I said, can you, can you give me a few things about Emelda? You know, what could I talk about? So here is what I, what I received. And it's a, I think it's a really great story. And uh, I want to share it with you. So Emelda is 
uh, among the one million farmers in Zambia that are supported by the National Farmer Input Support Program. She is a farmer, a single mother from Monzi District, and she is basically one of the partners in the R4 initiative. In 2020, uh, her harvests failed because of a dry spell, and an insurance product triggered a payout which helped Imelda protect herself and her family from this failed harvest. And additionally, her participation in women's savings groups has enabled her to save enough to raise her six children on her own while also paying for their education. So lastly, uh, in the program, Imelda received technical advisory services, agricultural extension services to diversify her farm, helped her access drought tolerant seeds and seeds for more nutritious crops. She undertook trainings on post-harvest losses, uh, post losses to store her grains, ensure the quality of her pulses, and over the course of only two years, she has managed to turn her life around and is now well known as a successful and proud businesswoman in her community, inspiring other women to follow a similar path. So it's stories like this that I think get us going, you know, they, they keep us engaged in making sure that any efforts to resilience building put women at the center. And I hope that in the times to come, we will be able to share many more stories like the one of Imelda here on the, on the portal of the Center of Excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Gernot. And so we have uh, one more speaker before we're going to move to moderated discussion, who I'm very pleased has joined us. It's uh, Ms. Eva Kavuma, who is the Chief Operations Officer at African Risk Capacity. And she's going to shed light on their activities in applying a gender lens through an African regional platform on gender and disaster risk management. So Eva, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, as said, my name is Eva Grace Kavuma, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for uh, the African Risk Capacity Agency. I hope I can be heard. Yes, thank you. Um, and just by way of very short introduction, um, the African Risk Capacity is a, a specialized agency that was established by the African Union in 2012 and we're mandated to work with African member states of the African Union uh, to help them to plan, prepare, and to respond to disasters that are caused primarily by um, the effects of climate change. Um, but I'm here to really kind of focus on our um, gender strategy and the work we've done from a gender and DRM um, platform perspective. So um, as, as it's been said by, by many, due to the pre-existing gender inequalities, there must be a deliberate drive to ensure that gender e um, equality and inclusivity um, is, is, is present in order for a very holistic um, solution. Africa's inability to respond to disasters, including disease outbreaks, is compounded by the continent's pre-existing gender inequalities, which are often defined along roles and responsibilities um, uh, uh, um, assigned to men and women at home and within the societies. This results in different identities, social responsibilities, at, uh, attitudes, as well as expectations, and gender inequality is also concretely manifested in traditional socioeconomic, um, uh, in traditional socioeconomic and political spheres as discriminatory traditional and um, social norms and power relations lack of access to and control uh, over resources, services, as well as technology, poor participation in decision-making um, and leadership, low literacy and education, and the list goes on and on. As a result, um, women's needs are often not understood or very poorly addressed at best, with the marginalization of women cutting across all sectors of socioeconomic development, including uh, differences in vulnerabilities to disasters and capacities to reduce risk and inclusion in decision making and, uh, re uh, and resilience building processes. So unfortunately, these inequalities amplify the impact on disasters on of disasters 
on women and girls and deepen existing vulnerabilities. Now, just to uh, focus a little bit on uh, the ARC strategy to address some of these um, the, the issues that I've, I've, I've just pointed out and have been pointed out by others. In line with its gender strategy adopted in 2019, uh, the African Risk Capacity has committed to putting gender equality and women's empowerment at the heart of its strategy and recognizes the strong relationship between gender equality and disaster risk management towards the attainment of the SDGs as well as the Agenda 2063. Um, ARC is, con is, is uh, consciously ensuring that gender issues are taken into consideration throughout the, a systematic approach of DRM through the, gen to the, through the gender mainstreaming approach. And in adopting this approach, ARC is working towards addressing gender inequality issues in, an in, in, in terms of um, its internal policies, programs, and, and uh, pol um, procedures, as well as striving to attain the goals of transforming DRM approaches within its member states as a, a, um, as a whole. ARC's commitment to inclusion of gender in its operations and programs is geared towards transforming DRM approaches to ensure gender equality uh, for vulnerable men and women, thereby in conscious, in, in conscientiously implementing its five-year action plan enshrined in its gender strategy ARC expects to obtain three following um, outcomes. One, ensuring innovative knowledge on DRM is, de um, is developed and managed through the establishment of a think tank on gender, DRM, uh, gender and DRM, which includes sharing of best practices, lessons learned, and conducting research and studies and publications of relevant documents. Number two, promoting enhanced gender and DRM mainstream capacity of member states through gender analysis, development of training modules, tools, guidelines, and to the training of trainers. And, also, and, and lastly, creating an, a, an enabling environment for gender transformative policy for DRM and financing attained through advocacy, sensitization, capacity building, um, etc. As a result of the partnership between ARC and the African Union uh, Commission Department of Agriculture and DRR, and the Directorate of Gender, uh, the Gender and DRM platform was launched in May of 2021 uh, to ensure the integration of gender equality and women, empowerment issues in disaster risk management and financing um, and the financing landscape. The new platform contributes to the development and management of knowledge on the issues of, of gender and DRM and financing on the African continent by engaging in studies analyses of uh, gender disaggregated data, impact assessments, publication of best practices, um, and is a mechanism for policy dialogue and advocacy on gender transformative DRM approaches geared towards the adoption of gender transformative culture of insurance by member states. In conclusion, as partnerships is key to um, effective DRM, the platform is open to all key actors in the DRM spectrum, including relevant ministries of uh, AU member states, regional economic commissions, international organizations and development partners, uh, research institutes, academia, the private sector, and CSOs and women rights uh, organizations, amongst others. Important to mention, Inchi Resilience has been actively involved in the gender DRM platform since its launch. Through this platform, ARC has been, able to, has been uh, able to contribute to the center of excellence as a member of its gender working group um, as, as a way to put into practice smart partnerships and address the gaps in the gender and DRM and the financing landscape. In a nutshell, these are points I hope that have given you a better understanding of um, the work that we are doing from a, a, um, a gender perspective within ARC's strategy and our contribution to the overall aspirations of uh, addressing gender inequality in the DRM space. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eva. That was great.
So uh, we are going to move to discussion, and I have some questions for the audience, and then you can hopefully, if we move quickly enough, uh, uh, allow you to pose some questions to the panelists. But just before we do that, I wanted just to note that um, the uh, Center of Excellence is really a, a partnership that uh, the Government of Canada has worked very closely with the uh, German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, so Canada committed uh, 1.6 million Canadian dollars to the Center of Excellence uh, for uh, the advancements of it, its activity. And this complements the existing efforts that have been uh, provided by BMZ. Uh, and will allow the, those existing efforts to be uh, scaled up. And I do just want to give you two quick examples of the sorts of things that we're scaling up. And one is a leadership and diversity program for regulators that's for senior officials from the insurance regulatory agencies in developing economies. Um, and the goal is really to ensure that women uh, um, uh, are central to regulators' financial inclusion strategies. And this builds on the belief that organizations that prioritize building leadership capacity and gender diversity are obviously going to be better prepared to unlock financial and social gains uh, for, for underserved women. Um, and uh, another example is a study that will unpack barriers on uh, inclusive climate and disaster, disaster risk finance uh, that will provide uh, recommendations. And this is being done with the Mahila Housing Trust. Uh, there is also an expert directory that's being established for uh, linking policymakers and practitioners with experts in gender and CDRFI. So those are all things that, for those of you interested in this field, you'll definitely want to, uh, to connect to and uh, um, find out more about. So I'm now going to uh, go to the audience with um, uh, a couple of questions. So uh, I'm going to start off with uh, 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 asking you, uh, what actions are you undertaking to address gender gaps within your work? So um, uh, I think I will look around the audience. And I think on this one, uh, I think maybe Ingrid uh, Hoven would like to uh, take a crack at that. And I Ingrid is a member of the management board of, uh, of GIZ. And you can, you can do it from there, Ingrid. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. And, and let me first actually um, appreciate the efforts that you personally uh, put into this uh, this new project and of course also to all other members of the high level um, group of the Insurance uh, Resilience Partnership. I think this is an excellent idea and it will bring actually more gender action, not only to the um, climate risk and insurance schemes, but also I think will sensitize also the overall climate community on the necessity to put on the gender lens when it comes uh, to, to concrete climate action. So GIZ is an implementing agency owned by the German government, so we work on behalf of the German government. But gender issues are at large a very key value for all the work that GIZ is um, implementing with respect to project, programs, analytical work that we are conducting. The work is based on the gender strategy that we elaborated and finalized in 2018. And this is more or less the orientation that all people, all staff members within GIZ have to pick up. So more specifically, in the climate world, of course, what, what I would like to perhaps depart from what you have said in your introductory remarks, Patricia, is that actually that um, women and girls are much more hit by the impact of climate uh, than other groups of the society. And this is well known and proven by scientific work. What is still lacking is a recognition that actually um, uh, women are knowledge holders. They are good decision makers and have very important stakeholder groups when it comes to the operationalization of climate ambition on the ground. Um, and uh, this has also been laid out in the NDCs. Uh, the first round of NDCs, some of them have taken gender issues on board, but not really all of them. 
and it has actually be at the very generic level. Um, only a few NDCs really uh, lay out specific gender-related activities. So um, GRZ, as an implementing agency, has especially through the NDC partnership, where we are an institutional member of, try to insert where we are advising governments on NDCs um, to insert the gender lens to make sure that gender-related issues are not, not being forgotten. So one example is, for instance, the NDC work um, in, in Burkina Faso, uh, where the government wanted to spell out a very concrete investment plan. Um, and what was missing was actually, again, the issue of in what, what does it take to really deal with the needs, specific needs of, of women. So this was one specific um, deliverable that, that GIZ actually promoted. Or take, uh, if I take one um, other example with respect to what we have done in the past, uh, one example out of the climate risk and insurance um, field, um, and this is an example from Madagascar, uh, where GRZ, on behalf of uh, the German Development Corporation Ministry, advised the government to make uh, a bigger value change in the, in the peanut sector more climate resilient. And we wanted to introduce it as one of the tools that are quite decisive, um, an insurance scheme. And I think this was one of the first examples where we actually looked a little bit more concretely into the different needs of a smallholder female farmer and a smallholder male farmer. And it turned out that products that women want to um, insure are a bit different from the ones that men can actually insure or would insure. And that also the, the paying capacity of women is different. So it turned out that actually in Madagascar we developed two different kinds of products, one for women and one for, for the male farmers. And I think this is actually a very good um, example um, where we could put on the gender lens and develop gender smart solution in this field. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Uh, I think it would be interesting to have the perspective of, uh, of a private sector inst institution in the financial sector. So I'm going to call on Susan McGeechee of the Bank of Montreal, who is here uh, with us in the audience, to uh, give your answer to the question of uh, what actions are you undertaking to address gender gaps uh, within your area of work? Um, thanks, Patricia. I'm actually, I'm going to um, <laughs> admit to learning here. So we are, I'm, I'm here to see what lessons I can take from everything that I've heard from the case studies and the research that you're undertaking and bring those back to North America. So um, I am with Bank of Montreal. I'm head of the Climate Institute. We are focused on Canada and the U.S. Uh, we are looking at, so we've got detailed analytics looking at the, the risk of climate change impacts on our residential mortgages. And so the, the ability of people to protect themselves, become more resilient um, in their homes. And that applies across Canada as well as, as in the States. And so our analytics are looking at the different uh, climate change impacts and, and identifying those zones. What we haven't done, what we're starting to do actually, so first what we're starting to do is the what, how resilient will those homeowners be in different regions and how do we design insurance products because their insurance would have to change if they're going to be protected from, from these future impacts of climate change. And how, uh, what's their ability to pay? And is this a, a kind of a credit risk across the US and across Canada? And how do we address that? What we haven't done, and I'm picking up all of these ideas and I'd welcome partnership opportunities um, with everything that I'm hearing in the center of excellence is we haven't looked at how that, um, does that translate into differences between men and women and who, what demographics are most vulnerable in those vulnerable regions? And are they women with dependents that are the sole um, income earner for those dependents? We haven't looked at that and, and I'd like to take that back um, from, from this whole day in terms of the lens that we're looking at. The other piece I want to take back, and we're starting to do this too, and again, we haven't applied a gender lens. I think it's important. And I think, Patricia, you'll know it as well with Government of Canada. We have Indigenous peoples in vulnerable regions, so we know that now, and we know that they are more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change at the scale of 
um, you're talking about markets or, or, or um, regions across Africa. Uh, we have the exact same in Canada. We have the exact same in the U.S. and the Deep South. So lots of vulnerabilities with, with um, um, in, the, in terms of physical impact and also an inability to finance that vulnerability to pay, pay to um, be more resilient. So we need to identify some very innovative finance, insurance finance products. We don't want to just walk away from these regions. We want to be able to lean into those regions and figure out how we can support either with uh, collaborative approaches and what I haven't done, and I think now, again, we haven't applied a gender lens on Indigenous peoples as well to see they they are so, they're the women we do know are so close to the land and so close to solutions and yet we haven't applied a gender lens in terms of what they could do to help us better understand how to create more resilient communities and perhaps differentiate our financing products um, and then the third thing I will talk about that we have done is we've noticed that men are more inclined to take on the large-scale um, uh, climate solution companies. So they, they're more of the they're more active in the entrepreneurial world. Women are very active in entrepreneurial um, activities, but not so much as um, as as wide a revenue generating opportunity. So they they take less risk. And so what we have done is developed a fund so that it can support women led solutions on climate risk and um, and then give give them a. a more preferential financing for those, their their um, women-owned um, endeavors or, or uh, companies. Thank you, Susan. So uh, um, we've just got a couple minutes left. Uh, so uh, two other questions that are on the screen here: What research and data are required for progress towards uh, gen gender smart solutions for the CDRFI area? So. What are the, the what are the research and data gaps? That's a big question. Uh, and uh, what are the gaps for effectively applying a gender lens in this case? So, I'm going to ask you if you can address that in two quick minutes, uh, so we can then take a question from the audience. So uh, I know that Jürgen Zattler of uh, the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, he's Director General there, did want to to uh, give his quick answer on the the uh, uh, research and data gaps. We know there are many, but maybe focus on a, a couple of key ones. Thanks, thanks, uh, Jürgen. Yeah, thanks a lot, Patricia. And also from my side, really congratulations to launching this, um, uh, this group. And um, you were the driving force. And uh, really, we, we support you, but um, congratulations. And uh, the two questions are closely related. I think the starting point is to have sex disaggregated data. We already have in many instances. For example, I uh, was uh, executive director for Germany uh, in the World Bank uh, until a year ago. And then in IDA, in the World Bank scorecard, we have, uh, we have more sex disaggregated data, but we have to to do that in, in a very systematic uh, way. And of course, this can help us then uh, to work along the whole uh, delivery chain. Um, the, uh, the design of products, uh, the delivery of products, and then also to look at the impact and to learn. I think that's really key. And there are many examples uh, we, we could um, uh, discuss where it really makes a difference uh, to uh, to deliver to women or to men, and Ingrid has uh, give one example, so I will not go into that. But just perhaps looking at it in a systematic way, I think what we need is three things. The first one is quantitative data, and there we have heard um, uh, a few examples. The second level is qualitative data, for example, uh, literacy uh, levels differ between uh, uh, men and women, but we do not know yet what exactly the sex uh, differentiated literacy, um, the sex differentiated literacy needs are. We we don't know that yet. This information can help to understand how to reach a wider range of vulnerable uh, people. And um, uh, lastly, we need more information on the impact of gender responsive activities. 
Uh, we need uh, that in order to effectively monitor, evaluate it, and learn from, from projects. So that's the impact. So I think we have to work on this, uh, on, on this um, circle uh, uh, in order to better understand and to better calibrate our support. Thanks. Thank you, Jürgen. So disaggregate, disaggregated data by gender, very key. And the fundamental issue of design of the products so that they're uh, gender appropriate. So uh, I want to turn it to uh, a question from uh, our audience. Please, please, up, up, up here, up here. I think we're allow allow this young woman to speak. Please go ahead. Thanks so much. And whilst I'm sure we appreciate the activism, it's great that you brought it back to the focus of women and risk financing. Thank you so much, Ambassador Fuller. Um, so my question really is um, to the membership. Um, how can we get involved with the working group? How can we join the Center of Excellence? Perhaps in your, I don't know if you're wrapping up, but it'd be wonderful to know how we can all credibly commit to the action to change uh, risk financing for the better and, and make it more inclusive for women and girls around the world. Tuga, I think you might be best place to answer that. So go ahead, Tuga. And Tuga, just to reiterate the question, it's uh, how can people get involved in the, the work of the uh, uh, Center for Excellence? Thank you so much. And thank you for that question and for everyone here today. You know, we're not here as Insurers Resilience Secretariat by any means. This would not have been possible and the Center of Excellence would have nothing on it if it wasn't for many people in this room, many people that are watching us on video now. I would really love a couple of things if I have some asks. Number one, let us know where the gaps are. Do you wake up and think, these are the gaps and I wish I understood, I could fill the knowledge gap related to this. Or, you know, I read this recommendation, for example, my, um, this very good example of the need for gender disaggregated data. How do I actually do that in my context, in my project? If that is the need, we would love to take that forward, either with you or we'll commission it with another partner to try and provide guidance notes that really take us towards that action. If you have um, any resources that you think others would benefit from, please share them with us. If you have a story to tell, we heard fantastic stories and I think it, that's a really good way to convey what's happening on the ground, do contact us and let us know. We are looking for partners, we are looking, and actually, I will actually very candidly say, hold us accountable. So we've launched the Center of Excellence. I hope that in a year you feel that this really is driving your work towards greater gender sensitive, responsive and transformative um, approaches. So please contact us. Um, we actually have on our Center of Excellence website, there are ways of reaching us. We want to have a conversation to begin with. We're learning. You as practitioners on the ground, you as policymakers, what are your needs? What is the barrier that is preventing you from taking this forward? So thank you. Super. Thank you very much. So that's, that's a great note to end on, how you can get involved. Thank you very much for attending this session. Your presence here is greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you, Tuga, for all of your effort in, in arranging uh, this session and the partnership uh, with Canada. And thank you to each and every one of our great panelists who brought such a high value to this uh, discussion. Really appreciate your contribution today. And thank you, of course, to Germany for being a great partner with us in the INSU Resilience uh, Global Partnership. Have a great afternoon, great evening. Bye-bye.